we are continuing to trace the argument of the letter of 1st Timothy and we come now to the passage that deals with requirements for being an overseer or an elder. In other words, we are tracing the argument of 1 Timothy 3 verses 1 to 7. Without further ado, let's dive into it. As I see the passage, it begins with an idea. Paul presents an idea. The idea is if anybody aspires to the office of an overseer, an overseer and an elder are two words for the same role within the local church, and he has the idea he desires a noble task. So this is a noble task. This is the key thought in the opening portion. And then he says, therefore. And therefore is a word that's used to draw an inference. The big idea is that if somebody wants to be an overseer, they want a noble office. And to occupy a noble office, they need to have noble characteristics. And so for the rest of this portion, Paul is going to explain the noble character that this potential overseer needs in order to occupy the noble office. We can unpack that opening portion like this. It starts with an orienter which is one of the trustworthy sayings. This saying is trustworthy, or this is a trustworthy saying. And then the content of the orienta is, the main clause is, he desires a noble task. Who desires a noble task? Well, the condition is, if anybody aspires to the office of an overseer, he desires a noble task. This is our main clause. He desires a noble task, and it's this noble task that is going to call forth the inference that he needs to have noble character. If we continue unpacking this, we can look now at the qualities that belong in the inference. And essentially, they fall into four groupings, and these are just in series. In other words, Paul makes four broad statements about the characteristics a person needs to have in order to be eligible to, to occupy this noble office of an overseer. The first set of qualities are general character qualities. And essentially the key one is that he must be above reproach. So these are general and they relate to the person's character. Next, we have this key idea that he needs to manage his household well. So this is management particularly of the family. Now, why particularly of the family? Well, because Paul sees the church as the household of God. We'll see that at the end of the chapter. And therefore, the skill set required to be a good leader in the household of God is the ability to be a good leader in your own household. The third thing that he mentions is that he must not be a recent convert. So he must be a mature believer. And then the last one, is that he must be well thought of by outsiders. In other words, the person must have a good reputation in society. Let's go and look at each of those. We'll start with the general character requirements, and Paul breaks them down into two groupings. There are some positive traits the person must model, and there are some negative traits to be avoided. So this is the positive ones are the musts, and the negative ones are all introduced by the word not. We could present these as a list, but essentially he must be above reproach. He must be the husband of one wife. I'm not convinced this is the best translation. I think the key idea here is that he needs to be a faithful husband. Faithfulness was not necessarily a great virtue in the Roman world. It was kind of thought that Wives needed to be faithful, but powerful men, not so much. And maybe it's not limited only to the ancient world, right? And then we've got some others. He must be sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, and able to teach. In a parallel list in Titus, Paul unpacks this at some length. And then a various, a various things that he must not be guilty of. He mustn't be a drunkard. He mustn't be violent, quarrelsome, or a lover of money. Let's turn now to the management requirements. There's a key action here that he must manage his own household well. So this idea is that the person best qualified to be an overseer is the person who is a good father, a good leader of a household. 
What does it mean to manage your household well? So that's a generic statement, right? It doesn't give you any content or detail. Well, the specific details that would indicate that he's managing his household well is with all dignity keeping his children submissive. So if his children are submissive and respectful and well behaved, it's probably a good indication that the man is managing his household effectively. So he must manage his household well was the action required of him. The reason for that, this for year is the reason, although it actually governs this clause. For if someone does not know how to manage his household well, how is he going to manage God's church? And as I said, we'll see later that Paul's primary concept of the church is as a household. How different from much of what we use today where we kind of look for somebody who manages a business well. And the reason we tend to look for successful business people to be elders and overseers today is probably that we mostly see the church in corporate terms rather than in family terms. The third characteristic is that he must not be a recent convert. So that's our action. And the purpose of not being a recent convert, this or is actually so that he may not. So hiname in the Greek text, so that he may not become puffed up with conceit and as a result fall into the same condemnation of the devil. So the idea of if you take somebody who's young and ambitious and you promote them too quickly, they think that they are wonderful, pride sets in, and this is a formula for disaster in a church leader. And then lastly, there's a final requirement, an action. He must be well thought of by outsiders. In other words, he must have a good reputation as a noble person in the community. And again, we have a purpose. So this is an action and a purpose so that he may not fall into disgrace and that he will bring honor and respect to the church in which he is an overseer. And that essentially is the set of requirements for elders or overseers in 1 Timothy chapter 3. There's a big idea. If you desire to be an overseer or an elder, you desire a noble task. Therefore, inference, you need to have noble character in four key areas. General character, managing a household, not being a recent convert so that pride doesn't set in, and having a good reputation with outsiders.